The interesting thing for this cycle is the 100 Bitcoin to 1,000 Bitcoin strata. And that's the um, kind of high net worth, in, net worth individuals and the smallish head funds. They, they actually bought tons of Bitcoins and there's been an outlier bump. Um, and that bump started um, around um, <clears throat> $30,000 in January. It was... Um, let me zoom in. I think, uh, yeah, okay. So that bump we saw um, with dolphins and sharks, 100 bitcoins upwards, um, but not the whales, that started to climb after Tesla started buying Bitcoin. Uh, it was very really interesting. So it kind of it's interesting in that when Elon Musk threw FUD, um, there was a lot of selling as well. Um, but all those guys didn't sell that much. They still hold a lot of supply. Um but uh, overall, the trend is looking absolutely great. Um, I'm asking um, Raphael at Glassnode, um, CTO over there, to do a little bit of extra work in the counts of um, these different holders to get the populations. And if we can, if I can get that data, then I can do a, um, run this thing called Gini coefficient across Bitcoin across the last twelve years, which is cool. You know, that's a wealth, that's a wealth distribution. Um, that economists use in, inside an economy. So we can start to calculate that um, once I get that data. I think they're working on it now. So that'll be really interesting because from what I've seen, there's no other um, you know, coin network that's even close to this level of distribution. Um, yeah, I, I'm really, it's a really strong argument. Um, the distribution of Bitcoin is, um, you know, it's super important because if you control a lot of the asset then it ceases to be, um, you know, a, a decentralized network. Um, it can be pushed around by, like gold, you know, gold gold failed um, because it was too centralized in holdings. Um, you know, the governments held it. They used it to back money. And then when those central entities lost um, control of their gold, mainly America, right, they lost control of the gold, and then they they decoupled us from the gold standard and now we've got fiat so stuff you know weird stuff can happen when you've got like large pockets of control of the coins um and so yeah bitcoin's like amazing right now what i'm seeing on on chain um very heartening well promising then i was chatting to american hodl yesterday i gave him a call um because mm -hmm. me and him have a bet another bet uh, half a bitcoin on uh 300k over under he's so super bullish he's over and i'm under i'm feeling pretty confident i'm gonna win that bet but you never know end of the bull market frothy times when things go crazy and supply shocks uh and it's kind of funny enough it's kind of a bet i want to lose because yeah of, of, of course for me it'd be great if uh bitcoin uh reached like two, 280 and and then uh, ended because I win the bet. But but generally speaking, if we overshoot three hundred, I like I'll be glad to lose that bet. It'll be one. Do you? Uh, did you? What, what do you? You have to define the bet, like because uh, you can say into the bull market, but um, oh, it's uh, it's um, three hundred k under over midnight, thirty uh, first of December on Coinbase. Oh, okay. That's cool. Pretty I think it's good to do lots of these bets because whatever you bet, you can hedge it on the options market and make a profit no matter which way it settles. <laughs> yeah, we don't hedge though because we think it's a bit more fun not to hedge. Right, yeah, yeah, okay. But you don't have to tell the other person, right? <laughs> I know, I know. But I, I, I think me and him uh, are going to just keep making these stupid bets and he was laughing. He was like, I'm going to probably end up giving you like five Bitcoin over the next few years. I was like, if you keep making these bets, bets you will. So, but I'm it's bullish. Like, it's, always be it's better to bet on the negative because, um, you know, if you lose the bet, you're always going to be like happy. But either way, you're happy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's well, so I, I'm, uh, I was talking to my son about this. He was like, what, what's going to happen this year? Uh, I think, I think I tell you who's pretty good at predictions is Pantera, and I think they've got it topping out about one fifteen, one twenty. I I do think a hundred will be some weird psychological battle because I think there's some people who might have, who might be like, oh, if I sell ten Bitcoin, I'll have a million dollars, yada yada. I'll be a millionaire, and I think that for just a number of reasons will be a psychological battle. I could be wrong. We could just fly through it. I mean, remember ten k in two thousand seventeen, we flew through it. It's absolutely possible. 
I think that Pantera didn't they use the stock to flow ratio as their their prediction? Um, I don't know. I just got a chart in my email, but uh, I, I, I'm I'm thinking it's somewhere between one one fifty myself. I don't know if you're still thinking three hundred is possible, but I'm like one one fifty. Yeah, I like I have a, this model right, which is the band in mm. which it, it floats with in the upper bound and. All the past cycles, we we hit the upper bound before it, it ended, um, but it, of course it's a moving target. So, um, like I have this great, um, I have this great situation where I don't have to be exactly right because it's it's a moving target. I can keep ju- adjusting it because it's just a model. Um, you know, the upper band today is one hundred sixty-two thousand dollars, and we just don't know which. Which trajectory? But it is the current trajectory is around. It's just, it, you know it's because of this this major pullback, um, and it, it does run on the historic averages of the price movements. Um, we're really well. You just got to text me when we're done. Just say two hundred k. You know we're at two hundred k. I was just thinking you got this bet, and if it was at the top of the bull market, I'm like going. <laughs> Yeah, that's contingent on a definition of the top of a bull market. If we just keep wandering upwards, like, you know, like Dan Howell's super cycle, Dan Howell's super cycle is really, I think, we skip a cycle and we just go to the next. Um, well, if that actually happens and we go to the next, there's not going to be a next cycle because the halving don't need squat. Um, you know, like, we're, well, some, someone said to me that. Um, one of the first bear markets was kickstarted by Mt. Gox, um, and that may have created a pattern for future years. Uh, and I don't know how much to read into that, but um, that was something somebody said to me. Look, but I don't care either way. You know what? It just what will be will be. I would just love personally this whole four year structure to break and things to become a little bit more. In some ways, I'm, I'm saying random, but a little bit more consistent as well yeah because it's just this four it, if it becomes this predictable four year every four years it, i don't I find it a little bit boring you know imagine a 50 years and the you know whatever it is like um the happening goes from point you know um, zero, point zero. one bitcoin or like a well, block reward of point zero zero one bitcoin to point zero 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 five bitcoins it doesn't mean squat to supply and demand on on the system you're not going to get a supply shock you know it's really you're going to be like you know if, if barry silbert still controls like uh, maybe by then um five percent of supply and he's chewing on his two percent um per annum the supply shock coming from him dumping on the market's going to pale to um you know the supply um you know dumped by miners um and so it just becomes demand and supply um and like you know this whether you know mount gox um created this four-year cycle um you know if you look at how it has worked in the past when the halvening happens there's an impulse a push right because suddenly the supply the constant supply and sell down miners have and so it's a push one way so the cycles are from the push not the bear market. It's in it's in this happening where the the price just is wandering sideways, and then it starts to gather steam as as that collective push, you know, sort of works its way into the system. So we get a shove every four years at a particular time, and then it moves up. Where it tops, it's anyone's business. Uh, I think maybe he's right. Maybe Mount Gox was the cause of that top. Um, Maybe 2017 was a top because um, that was the first um, major tax season. You know, people didn't really figure out paying taxes in 2013. But in December 2017, I just had a lot of friends going, oh, man, we're going to pay taxes. Holy. And they had to sell a ton of their coins because they were flipping altcoins in that crazy 2017 um, era of, you know, hundreds of x if you got the right coins um crazy crappy verge coin like people were making 100 x over a few months and and it was like oh well i know someone who bought a house from their verge coin and then like uh they paid more tax than their um you know than they had left at the end of the bear season so so 2017 top probably was a tax top um but you know who knows what the next top is i don't think there's going to be um a well-formed fomo bubble top um anymore 
like i want to just do a little bit more research into it i was starting to get some of the data um behind it like who are who are the sell pressure um guys exchanges are especially derivative exchanges etf management fees are uh, miners are we just have to get all of that together and then start to look at how those movements um wander and how it compares to this four-year um sort of halvening drop and i i really think it, it's a minimal thing now so um Things are it'll be really interesting to see